spirit of life and love and abundant spring days. May you hold us in our grief, accompany us in our sadness, and also bear witness to our blessings, to our joys, to our growth in this moment. Though this virus certainly calls us to fully reckon with the scary parts of our interdependence, spirit of life, in moments of sacred stillness and quiet, may we hear you whisper that fundamental truth, that we are all connected. Because in that truth, we can also come to know that we are not alone. Spirit of life, may we also hear the calling to create that experience of connection with one another, to honor our covenant with one another, to wield our power to spread love in the face of fear. And along the way, realize the highest, greatest aspirations of this beloved community. Amen. And now we'll enjoy this beautiful rendition of My Heart Flows On an Endless Song by Brian Block. <laughs> Good morning again, everyone. This morning's reading is a reflection from one of my favorites, Brene Brown, about this time of pandemic. We will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal other than we normalized greed inequity, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, lack. We should not long to return, my friends. We are given the opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity. It is so great to be back with you all this morning. It was such a truly a joy to spend five Sundays with you earlier this year. And I know that feels like a decade ago now but it was actually only a few months ago. To be exact, the last time I was with you was February 23rd, and I remember that because it was the day after my birthday. And on that day, a very talented young artist from your congregation made me this birthday card, which I have kept on my desk this whole time. I mean, who doesn't want a panda smiling at you all day? Anyway, shout out to Samantha. Uh, I'm excited to see that you are now moving into watercolors and that you are taking Facebook by storm. And I look forward to following your career. I think I sent a message to you saying, if you're offering public speaking lessons, I'm interested. I hope all of the children and youth and parents of this congregation are doing well. I know you've got a couple more weeks until school is out and I hope that the transition from the school year 
to the summer can still feel special and exciting, even in these circumstances. And of course, I hope you are all doing well. I'm thinking of you, and I hope that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy right now. My spouse and I are doing well, grateful to be healthy and doing meaningful work, although Ree is a doctor working on the front lines. And I'd be lying if I said that this wasn't hard and scary. It is. And we are navigating the pandemic as best as we can. And we're doing so by concentrating on three things, three connections that I want to reflect on a bit today. First, our connection to others. Each of us are called to figure out where and how we feel most connected right now. Is Zoom doing it for you? Maybe, maybe not. Walks with a friend six feet apart, porch parties that I was just hearing about, socially distanced events outdoor that we heard about a little bit earlier as people were gathering this morning, phone calls, letters, going for a drive. We all have different needs. We experience connection differently. And of course, this makes the task of suddenly completely reinventing ministry and worship and all of it incredibly difficult. But I know and I'm seeing that you are working tirelessly to meet each other's needs with creativity and resilience and compassion. I saw that yesterday doing um, the tech team worship rehearsal meeting. Um, let me just say some churches are doing tech rehearsals, but this church is. It's incredible to see the amount of commitment to learning this entirely new thing. And it's beautiful. beautiful. And as a side, I know that in your newsletter this week, your leadership communicated that this congregation is strongly considering the UUA's guidelines to stay virtual until May of 2021. I know it's been very hard to digest this news, but I hope that you can be comforted by the faith and knowledge that you are all gonna figure this out together, that we're not alone. And though that date of May 2021 feels so far off, know that the day will come when this congregation will be physically together again. But also know the truth that when that happens, it will not be going back to normal. It will be going forward to a new normal. And as Brene Brown suggests, the hope for a better, more loving, more just normal is ours to cultivate in this very moment together. The second point of connection I've tried to focus on is I think in many ways the hardest and it's our connection to ourselves. It is each of our responsibility to find enough stillness in this pandemic to ask truly, how am I? And we should acknowledge how hard it can be to do that. It requires incredible strength to say to ourselves and to others, actually, I am heartbroken because I'm missing my grandchild's infancy and I can't get it back because I'm separated from my aging parents. It takes courage to say I'm scared. Scared for my life, scared because I don't know where rent money is gonna come. Scared because I feel sad and alone and I don't know how to shake it. But we have got to face all of these things with honesty and courage, and here's why. Because when we don't face these feelings honestly, when we bury these feelings, we know that we're doing it. Somewhere in us, we know it. And when 
we try to bury them, they become seeds. And they resurface. They will manifest in ways that are unhealthy and harmful to ourselves and those we love. So first and foremost, that is the work that we are called to do in this moment. We've got to listen to our hearts and be present to where we are and what we need and tend to those things as if our lives depended on it. The third and final connection I want to reflect on today is the connection that we feel to something greater than ourselves. That great gift of waking up in the morning with a clear and profound sense of purpose to give life the shape of justice. And let me first just say that for some of us, this is just not where our hearts can be right now. Some among us are and need to be focused on tending to ourselves and our loved ones. That is priority number one. But for others among us, I believe we are now called into a greater sense of purpose to be of service to this world. And along the way, I think we'll find that that work will foster those other two connections with ourselves and with others. As some of you know, and as Cindy mentioned earlier, at the start um, of the year, I took over as the executive director of your UU Justice Ministry in North Carolina, Forward Together. And at the start of the year, like many of you, I got excited and ready to UU the vote. And if you don't know what that is, that is our denomination's campaign to engage people in the electoral process and promote our values and fight for fair elections this year. In January and February, we could feel the momentum building. We had nine months to this historical election where both the stakes and the challenges could not be higher. Or so we thought. So we began developing a plan with big regional gatherings and door-to-door -door canvassing and tabling at big summer events with You Can Vote. In fact, your congregation was all ready to host a You Can Vote training on March 15th. But then, of course, that training never happened. This pandemic took hold of our lives and changed everything, including selection. A few weeks ago, someone sent me a testimonial from an activist named Ziamara, and in it, she was describing her mentality for fighting for immigrant justice during this pandemic. But I thought that her words deeply applied to our UU The Vote campaign as well. She said this, we're building this plane as we fly it. Yep. Well, actually, she, she used a couple extra words in there that I thought might not be appropriate for a sermon, but you get the point. We are building this plane as we fly it. The phrase is also so poignant because it implies that faith is required to do this work. We don't know what these next five months are going, are going to unfold in these next five months, but we just need to begin. We just need to start. And that's not to say we don't have a plan. I mean, we do. We have many, many, many plans. I was on a call a couple of weeks ago in which a member of the State Board of Elections offered this advice out of his own experience this year. He said, this year we need to have contingency plan after contingency plan after contingency plan and not fall in love with any of them. If this is how the State Board of Elections is talking, then who are we to expect a clear pathway forward? Like many you use, I love a good plan. I like to be strategic 
and thorough. I don't like to begin until I know where I'm going and how I'm gonna get there. I like to be in control. But if this pandemic has taught us anything, it is that we are not in control. This world spins on and we are tethered to one another and any false sense of control we once had is simply a reflection of our privilege to be able to deny that reality. And this is one of the great spiritual lessons of this pandemic. And in order for us to do the work we still must do in this election, we must embrace that lesson and let it guide us. We must embrace that the work will be messy because even now, at the end of May, we're still in ways trying to figure out what we need to be fighting for. We don't know if the requirement for absentee ballot applications will be lowered from needing two witnesses to one. We don't know if there will be more purging of the voter rolls. Donna is keeping a close eye on that for your county, by the way. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but we don't even know if the post office will still be around in November. But we're gonna take it one step at a time. Over the last few months, we have regrouped. Leaders across 16 of our congregations in North Carolina, including Donna Scheidt, have been meeting and strategizing. We've been writing grants and talking to partners and coming up with pathways forward. And because of the commitment shown by UUs in our state over the last two months, Forward Together and our network of congregations has received over $25,000 in grant money from the UUA and the UU funding program to support our UU the Vote efforts here in North Carolina. That's amazing. And now that we've regrouped, we need more people. We simply need more people to join this ever effort. And as the Reverend Ashley Haran says, we need people to take shifts for the revolution. So I wanna to end today by telling you about two opportunities, two tangible invitations for you to do just that. First, for those of you who had planned to attend that March 15th training with You Can Vote, or even if you hadn't, we invite you to our upcoming UU You Can Vote statewide meeting on June 18th at five o'clock. You Can Vote has been working around the clock to come up with new strategies to register voters this summer, and now they need our help. And second, you may be thinking, well, that event's three weeks away. Is there any way for me to start helping right now? Well, by George, there is. This week, we are launching a postcard campaign in partnership with the NAACP and Reclaim Our Vote. Together, you use from across the state have already committed to write over 7,000 postcards to mostly older rural voters of color who have been purged from the voter rolls in North Carolina. Volunteers are given a simple kit of 20 postcards like this with all the information and the supplies that you need to make an immediate impact. And if you'd like to learn more about either of these opportunities, you can email Donna Scheid or myself and or you can join Donna and I in a special breakout room during coffee hour today. So just go into your regular coffee hour time and let them know that you'd like to talk to us more about you, you the vote. Friends, we have 163 days to the election. But the fight for fair and safe elections is happening right now. The fight to maintain essential early voting days and locations is happening right now. The work to register and re-register North Carolinians is happening right now.
It is time for us to take shifts for the revolution. The time is now. In this time of pandemic, may we each be in deep connection with one another and ourselves and to that which is greater than ourselves. In our lives, we are called to find a clear and profound sense of purpose for that greater cause so that we can realize that while we may not be in control, we are not powerless. No, in fact, when we work together, we are more powerful than we can even imagine. We have to believe that right now. We have to believe it. We have to hold close to that vision of a new and more loving world. And then we need to will it into existence. May it be so. Amen. <laughs>